I'm here at Hook, Line, and Paddle with Chris, and the question we're going to look at today is what are the pros and cons of a sit inside, a sit on top, and something new, a paddleboard, something many of you guys may not have thought about as a fishing vehicle. So stay tuned. I'm here at Hook, Line, and Paddle with Chris, as I mentioned, and we're going to look at sit on tops, sit insides, and paddle boards as fishing vehicles. And for those of you who are not hardcore fishermen, there may be one or two of these models that will surprise you with given their versatility. So with that, let's go ahead and start with the sit insides. All right, Steve, so for sit insides, one of the pros is going to be they're lightweight. Um, there's less plastic than a sit on top. So you're going to be in a 54, 55 pound range for your kind of loading and unloading on off the car out of the back of the truck. They're a little bit more efficient on the water, just have sharper bow entries. So, you know, the, they're more efficient to paddle. Um, you know, a lot of sit on tops have, have improved their, their hull design where they're as efficient, maybe just a hair slower. When it comes to actually fishing the boat, I would think of a sit inside for the recreational kayaker that would like to take a fishing rod with them in case they see a tail in red or some bait blowing up on the water. They want to make a cast at it, see if, see if they can catch a fish. Um, starting with something a little more simpler, Prodigy, just a few places in front of you, you could actually mount a rod holder. Remember, you know, from sitting back here, you're going to reach forward to get it. Uh, storage wise, it's only going to be what you have between your legs, and I mean easily accessible storage. I mean, the whole boat's hollow, so you can have a lot of gear up in the bow, but you're not going to be able to reach that while you're fishing. So you're kind of limited to what you can keep between your legs, maybe something small behind the seat. The reason why it's a little bit difficult to do recessed tubes to add more rod storage or even surface mount um, rod holders is because of the bulkhead here to keep your, your dry storage in the stern uh, dry, that bulkhead is about that wide. <clears throat> so now you're thinking about putting a rod holder all the way back here, and again, you're going to be able to reach comfortably all the way back there for it. Um, so for a casual fisherman, or the person that wants to have the ability to make a cast or two while they're just out have, enjoying their paddle, um, a sit inside is a good way to do it. Um, to get a little bit more versatility, if we look at the new redesigned Pungo uh, for 2019 from Wilderness Systems, um, they redesigned their dashboard system where they put in their track that you could add any track mounted rod holder, whether it be Ram, Scotty, Railblazer, um, some new ones coming out from Yak Attack uh, or from Select Designs or Triple Threat that can go here. You also have nice flat areas here on both sides if you wanted to surface mount a rod holder if you could. You know, and is it cat approved? Obviously, this boat is cat approved for, for fishing. Um, well, any, boat, any boat's cat approved as long as you get spent at the end of the yeah, day. Ca cats always <laughs> approved fishing. <laughs> um, so that's just a little added bonus in this style boat. Again, you're going to run into the same issue back here in the stern because of the foam for the bulkhead for the dry storage. You would have to mount your rod holder further back. And then I've, I've had a lot of people ask me, like, well, why can't I just stick something here or, or put it right there so I can, I can reach it? Well, if you think about it, when you're paddling and your leg's out in front of you, the proper stroke is toe to hip. So that rod holder has to be in front of your arm fully extended or you're going to catch it as you're paddling if it's on the side. If you can find a little spot right in front of you on the top of the deck, obviously you're going to miss it while you're paddling. But... You know, we've had a few customers ask, like, why can't we just mount it right here where I can reach it, where you're going to end up hitting it with your paddle. You're not going to be able to draw through your fishing rod. So, for sit-ins, not impossible to fish. See? Um, the seats, like we, talked about, um, like we talked about earlier in one of Steve's videos, they're kind of fixed. So, there's no high-low position. Um, you're just kind of getting what you're getting in your seat system while you're out fishing. Um, you know... I don't know if I'd want to fish five, six hours in, this, in the seat, but to go out for a couple hours, enjoy a paddle, and bring a raw with me, it's definitely doable. Um, of course, with the Pungu, you have the more breathable phase three system that's much more adjustable. Um, but other than that, you know, not an impossible boat to fish out of, but not my first choice. 
I'm surrounded by sit on tops. I'm confused. I need Chris to help me out. Please educate me. Thank you. All right, so we talked about before the 12 foot sit in size. Kind of limited where you can add your odd holders to. They are lighter. That, that's kind of a bonus. But if you really want to look at your kayak as your true mode of transportation to get to fishing, um, sit on tops now start to fit the bill. Um, they're going to be a little bit heavier. We're going to be adding about 10 or so pounds of weight, you know, in the 64 pound where the previous boats were around 54. Um, but starting here with um, Wilderness's Tarpon 120, which is the 12 foot version of their sit on top, you're now getting aluminum track that you can add rod holders to. You're getting that adjustable phase, phase three seat system. You have areas marked out here in the back that you can add trolling tubes to. Um, if you don't feel like drilling in the boat, of course, that's a service we offer here at the shop. We'll actually build them out for you. Um, you can, again, use more of their track systems, again, if you want to use some more track adapted um, rod holders. Um, Again, ample storage in the stern, which is called the tank well. Easy to just reach behind you to get something. Ample storage in front of you, easy to reach up and grab something out of it also. Um, you just the, your foot pegs are adjustable. You just reach forward and do it. We're going to sit inside. Sometimes you got to get out and do it. Um, the Pungo offers a rail that you can do it while you're seated. Um, if we come down to... So the, the same thing applies here in terms of a fixed seat, though. It does. So. Um, it's fixed. It's going to be like the Pungo with that phase three. So it's adjustable. Um, your backrest up and down, your seat pan up and down, but not true high-low adjustment. It'll be adjustable to comfort. And the first uh, big thing here is now you have something that's self-bailing. Correct. You know, over on that sit-in side, you get water in, it's in there forever. Yep, or you have to stop and take a sponge or a small hand bilge pump to remove that water. So now if you're looking for something that you can be inshore or go out through the surf and fish near shore, this is when we start getting into the bread and butter to sit on top. But what about stability? So what we just talked about here with the tarpon and what we moved down to with the liquid logic man ray or the native man ray, um, extremely stable to fish out of in the seated position. Um, they're just not wide enough to stand up in. Um, the liquid logic man ray is going to be a little more stripped down, but again can be built out to be an excellent fishing kayak. Um, I don't have one in stock right now. The native version of the Manta Ray 12 comes rig to fish with rails here and the recessed rod holders mounted. Um, if we want to then go up a few more pounds in that around 68 pound class range, that ability to have a high low seat and the ability to stand, then we come down to the native Manta Ray XT. Um, you get in that same frame chair that we, um, for comfort that has high low position, and now you can stand up. Now it's time to get up into the back-breaking weight of the big boys. The big sit-on-tops that are very stable and great fishing platforms. So Chris, what do we got there? So you look at something in the line of the Cuda HD, you're going to be at about 85 pounds. Um, we come over to the big rig, you're getting right around 100 pounds. Um, but again, well outfitted in the thought process of tons of track on it to you can kind of design how you want your kayak to fish or change it from one style of fish to the other extremely quickly by just loosening, adjusting, removing, adding rod holders. Um, again, we're in comfortable seat systems, um, but we are starting to gain weight. I mean, our lowest weight sit on top you can stand in is the Manta Ray XT at 68 pounds. Then we start getting these ones, 80s and 90s, up to 100. You'll see the same thing through the attack series from Wilderness Systems, uh, the Slayer uh, XC from Native. They're beefier boats. They're bigger boats. Um, great platforms to fish, but with that, with that great platform, you do gain some more weight to carry them around with. Um, and now we've got more room on these boats to do things. <coughs> the big rig, when it's with, we can add... Or it comes with a leaning post. It just locks in with a simple cotter pin to attach it. Um, now when you're up and fishing, you got something to lean on while you're standing up and pulling around. Um, you know, the bigger the boat, the more options you have. But again, you're going to bring in a little bit more on the weight side of the house. And the way we fix how heavy a kayak is, uh, 
a lot of companies are doing really well on bigger, beefier kayak carts. But once you get them out of the back of a truck, you get them down to the water. So you may think like, gosh, I don't want an 85 pound kayak, but there is a way to actually get that kayak on and off your vehicle and to the water, not just grabbing it by the handles and hoisting it and carrying yourself. But it's important, I think, to point out that that is an additional cost. It is. And, so and so as, as you get bigger and heavier, you know, it's more of a challenge for transport as well. Which true. would be a negative on one of these. That could be, yeah, that definitely could be a negative when you look at something that weighs 85 plus pounds, no matter who made it, you know, now you're looking at around $129 up to about $200 for a cart to move it around. And a lot of people will see that and like, I don't know if I want to invest all that money, but a little maintenance, just keeping them clean, <clears throat> rinsing everything off, uh, it's, it's an investment that's going to pay back. You, you know, you're, not, you're not buying a brand new $200 card every year. Um, you're not buying a new cock every three years because it fell apart on you. So sometimes that initial investment can be a little jaw-dropping. So a, a point then is if you're limited in terms of how you can transport it, you may end up having to go back to something that's really light. If you're like throwing one a of these, Honda Accord, that's then, all you have. And using this platform exactly. to put a couple exactly. of models. Exactly. And so you got to really consider that. What about the, the racks to carry these? Could, well, I guess Thule has racks to do. Yeah, two he has racks that, you know, um, they're the crossbars and the way it fits on your car is generic. It's the actual fit kit that clips in your windows or clips in your track system specific for your vehicle. Um, and that just makes a great fit. And there's options. If you go with a square bar, there's the outrigger too, which is a bar that comes out that you can rest the bow on. You can start it. You still have to deadlift it over your head throw in the car. But but you wouldn't want to do that for these guys, right? You could in some situations. Can some you put these on top of a SUV? With There are some loading aids, and yes, you could. Wow. Yes, you could. You can really spend a lot of money. I have one on my truck. It's fantastic. It's the Hullivator. It's 40 pounds of hydraulic lift. So it basically, it basically will come down to about here. Yeah. So all I have to do is lift my kayak up and set the cradles. Okay. And then the hydraulic lifts up and then tilts back down on my vehicle. So the bottom line on that then is if you're willing to spend the extra money for the right, well, actually, you should spend the extra money for the right kind of carry system, Correct. unless you're throwing it in the back of the truck. Yeah, bed of the truck, you know, most people like you do with a bed extender, just yeah. to get a little bit more supported, perfect. I mean, you're not going to find a full size or a medium size truck today that's not coming at least with a two-inch receiver um, coming, you know, on the bumper. Yeah. That's kind of become standard like power windows now. You're going to get that receiver. And so so you how, how you get it to the water is a uh, decision that you got to make in terms of uh, how you select stuff. Exactly. You know, you can stay below 60. You know, you can do a sit on top. Most likely you can't stand in, you know, with exception to the, the Slayer XC, um, and stay, you know, below 70 pounds. Or you can start looking at some of the larger kayaks that, you know, they're well outfitted. Just about anything you want to do from you know, either Wilderness, Native, or Jackson. And you're going to start creeping up, you know, 80 to about 100. You know, you're not going to go crazily over 100 pounds unless you start adding in some kind of foot draft system. Okay. That's when you're going to start. That's when you're really going to break that 100 pound mark. Okay. Uh, but most seats weigh around four to five pounds. So if you're at 100, 101, you can at least get sub 100 by just popping the seat out, taking a few things off because they are so adjustable and manipulable that you can just pop a few things off, <coughs> shave a few pounds, and then load it and unload it that way. Or you can just eat your vitamins. <laughs> Develop some big guns. <laughs> uh, anything else on these guys? I think yeah, I think we're good. So we just finished talking about kayaks in the 100-pound class that were all paddle. Now we got to move up one more notch and get to the pedal ones, and they have some unique considerations as well. That's right, Steve. So we can start as simply as, you know, a native Slayer 10. They're normally around 62 pounds dry. That's probably car toppable. Um, definitely easy to slide in the bed of the truck. But if we really just want to go from one end of the spectrum to the other, we think about the Hobie Pro Angler 14, the native Titan 13.5. We're at around 170 pounds fully assembled with the drive system. 
uh, the Titans are going to come down about 158 without the drive system. So, yes, with a pickup truck and a bed extender, maybe some boondocks landing gear for wheels for getting it around, doable. Um, if you have an SUV, uh, a four-door sedan, you're not really going to rooftop this. And that's when that trailer consideration comes into it. I get a small kayak trailer to haul it around. I would think without having a truck, it would be a wise investment, and it's just going to make using a boat this size, which is one of my personal favorites, um, just down to the water, easy to use. And the other, on the other side of it, that sport trailer design for kayaks, whether it be from Yakima, Malone, um, KT trailers, uh, a division of boondocks, uh, it's not just your kayak trailer. Um, you could add a rooftop box to it for carrying more, more gear. You could carry your kayak on one side of the trailer and get the appropriate bike carrier to the other side of the trailer. So you may look like, God, I don't know if I'd ever have a 170-pound kayak. I can't put that on top of my SUV. But with the purchase of a trailer, yes, a little bit more out of pocket, but you're not just getting a way to haul your kayak around. You're getting a way to haul your kayak around. And the other things you do, if you want to go on camping trips or just on vacation, you put all your toys in the back of the trailer, cars free of clutter, Enjoy your trip. There's a final installment here. Here's something you probably never thought of. Fishing off a paddleboard. And it has its pros and cons, just like everything else. So Chris, why would I want to fish on a paddleboard? It's going to be your lightest option. Um, this tracker from YOLO comes in at 29 pounds. So easy on and off the car. Don't need a boat ramp. Any kind of public access along the waterway. You can just slip right in and go. That might be its most beneficial fact. Stability, it's meant to stand up on. It's a stand-up paddleboard. So standing there fishing off of it is easy because it's meant to be stood up on a paddle. It's not something you have to master. A little bit of balance to it, but you haven't paddled a few times. You can figure it out. Um, this board is more of a kind of going out cruising kind of board, uh, but there are ways that you can take a paddle board and turn it into a fishing paddle board and once we discuss this one, we're going to actually look at a paddle board designed to fish off of. Um, so this is 12 foot long. You can see there's ample deck where you can hold down gear. And you're able to add a few things to these anchor points. Uh, one, we added the roto grip from Yak Attack. It just basically hooks into this anchor point right here. And there's a little nut you tighten down. So it's nice and stable. So if you and your wife are kind of sharing a paddle board, you can make it fish, and you can make it unfish when she wants to go out with some friends. Um, so being able to fish would be a nice place to store your paddle securely and not have it just slide off the top deck when you're not paying attention to it. Um, so this roto grip is a good way to fasten. Um, for the standing portion and stability and comfort, there's this nice big deck pad. It's going to act as non-skid. Non so when your feet are wet, you have a nice solid platform. Um, and then there are other ways, you know, well, what about tackle stores and rods? With a board like this, you know, we integrate Wilderness Systems tackle rod holder. Um, again, we're going to use um, some, some tie-down straps. You're going to hook right in. So once you position your tackle box where you want it, you'll be able to run a strap from here to here to secure it. You have a place to carry four rods, ample tackle up top and a larger compartment inside. Uh, so you can take what people would consider just a traditional paddle board to go out and, and just cruise on and not too much more money you can turn it into something you can also fish off. So there's really a good price advantage on a paddle board too. Uh, yeah, this is um, one of the more our high end ones. So this is around $15.95 because um, it's all fiberglass. You can look at some of our more simpler uh, paddleboard designs from YOLO, like their hammerhead design, which is a more durable material. Um, and they're ranging at right around $875. So you could have a family fun paddleboard that everyone can enjoy and for a little bit more out of pocket for you, turn to something you can fish on. So what would be the range on this? How far could I leave from the launch and fish? I mean, I think your range could be a couple miles, but your range in any kind of paddle craft is your endurance. I mean, 
I can cover quite a bit of distance because I mean I paddle all the time, so I'm able to you know I'm I'm strong enough to get you know three four miles one direction come back, so I, I can cover a lot of ground. Um, but even on a design like this, it's it's easy to cover some ground and fish. Or if you get this, that one little sweet spot, you want to fish real quick before work. Um, again, fast and simple, off the car, in the water, fishing, and load back up and go. And so I guess that's another advantage of this, is that they're so light. Yep. I mean, again, 29 pounds. pounds. This weighs 29 pounds. Exactly. So you can carry this in one hand. Yep, and you can, and to the water. Walk, walk back, anywhere. Yep. Back to the car, grab your tackle management system with rod holders, your paddle, and off you go. So you, you don't real, you're really not stuck at a boat launch then. You could launch this over the beach or off the shore uh, from a state park, anywhere where anywhere. you can Honestly, reach the shoreline. The answer to that question is as long as you're not trespassing. Yeah, don't trespass. As long as you're not trespassing, yeah. you got to launch. And so, it, 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 again, you can take, like we talked about earlier with the, the sit inside pack, not quite designed for fishing, you can make it work. Yep. Um, this you can make work a little better because of the multiple anchor points and now a lot of manufacturers seeing there's a hole that needs to be fit on these traditional boards. We have the ability to now add a paddle holder, add some tie down locations to, to secure Because if not, it's on loosely and if you happen to fall off, there goes all your rods and tackle. Now with some vertical lashing points, it's secure to the board and safe. And the nice thing about that is you could probably sit on it too if you need to. I think it'd be strong enough for you to sit on. Um, it's definitely wide enough. But if you got a Yeti cooler or something like that, it's yeah, a little bit down. bigger for sure. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're going to lose a little bit of your rod storage unless you can finagle a way to mount them to it. But other than that, yeah, you, you could technically have a little bit of a seat if you wanted to while you're out there also. So this is the basic model. Now let's go look at something that was made for fishing. Whoa, look at that. Thing. So. So designed for fishing <coughs> from Live Water Sports, this is their 14-foot expedition. They also make a 12-foot version of this. It's a catamaran hull, extremely stable. This 14-foot version will hold 700 pounds, and two adults can paddle it in tandem. For me, fishing something like this, I don't want anybody else with me. Um, stable enough that I can stand on top of a cooler as a polling platform in the shallows. What really makes this a great fishing board is we're not trying to piece together things to make it work. This has aluminum track run the length of the board, so now we can easily, just like on the kayaks, track adapt rod holders. Um, we they also for the for the paddle grip track adaptable for the paddle grip, track adaptable for the tie downs. Same type of nice padded non-skid, so if your feet are wet, you don't have to worry about falling off the board. Um, How just, heavy is that, Chris? So the 14-footers come in at 64 pounds, the 12-footers come in around 55. Um, it's all fiberglass, hollow, so it's kind of a, a deck and a hull married together. Um, has two fins on the back, one for each pontoon for, for tracking. Uh, regular traditional paddle boards have one 10-inch fin to help you go straight. Is there any challenge in getting this on top of a vehicle for transport? No, I think you're, the challenge, you're going to be more in that vein of it's going to be the 14-footer is going to be the weight of a standard traditional 12-foot fishing kayak that you can't stand up in. Um, right there in that 64-pound class. If you want to go a little bit lighter, do the 12-footer. Um, you're getting around 56 pounds to save a little bit more weight. Um, but again, designed for easy use. Um, Handles attached in the center for carrying, so you're going to carry it like a briefcase in the center so it's nice and balanced. There are attachments you can get for it. We have a live well attached to the back of it. Um, on the 14 footer, they actually have an expedition box that you can mount to it. Um, you know, guys, guys are taking these out now for two or three day trips, paddle trips, camping. Um, but again, just like we've talked about through this whole series between is this good for fishing? Yeah, we can make it work to. This was built for fishing, and the in the vein of paddle boards we've been talking about, um, the Tracker is a great flat water cruising board that you can get to fish well. Um, where the Live Water Sports board, whether the 12 or the 14, <coughs> was outfitted for fishing, um, the ability to add the rod holders easily, um, 
but you can see just down the side there's one, two, three, four uh, places, track places. So it's eight with your left and right side. W up on the bow, you have one on each pontoon, and same on the stern. So you can really deck this out. You can add aftermarket leaning posts. So we're in the back, and it looks like you got a lot of fish in here already. We do. So we have inflatable bait because they're not in any water. <laughs> but um, like we saw on the front, those two tracks on the front of the board so have the same two tracks here on the rear of the board. This is where the tracks go into mount, so you can slide it on or slide it off. You can have it on the front of the board if you want to also. And you can see here it's ported out in the back and in the front. So basically, as long as this board's in the water, your bait is in. Yeah, you got the flow right the there. You don't, you don't need an aerator at all. or anything like that. They kind of built that in with the, with the holes they drilled into it. That is pretty cool. And then, you know, just when it's closed up, you can lock it down, and that's it. So, you know, again, another option that you can add to something like this. You know, something designed to fish off of. But that comes with it, though, right? Uh, no, this is an accessory that you can add to it. Oh, that fits down on the, the back two pontoon. Correct, yeah, and those tracks that we saw on the front, they're the same back here. That's how it attaches and slides in. Okay, okay. The container they have. And this is a good example of something you could sit on, too, right here. Sit or, with this board being uh, that catamaran-style hull, sit or stand on. And again, you'll use those tie-down adapters, those vertical straps that you can just put in your track system and run it through your cooler to keep it on the, to keep it on the board. Um, we found... The board's wide enough to do a 35 quart cooler. This is a 25 quart cooler. So you can go up to about a 35 quart. Um, 45, you'd have to go lengthwise of the board. But definitely, you know, just an additional thing you can do to it for comfort and getting out and enjoying your day of fishing. Something I just noticed people buy cars for cup holders. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six cup holders. All right. Right here. And if you flip it over the other way, you have a huge cutting board. Oh. <coughs> it just flips. It just pops right off. Let's see. There we go. And then you can flip it. And then you have the utility top cutting board. Wow. That's awesome. So there's a couple options on how to get out fishing. You can do recreation fishing. You can do fishing. You can do stable fishing. You can do paddleboard fishing. And you can do fishing fishing. <laughs> Plenty of options at all different price ranges. And I'd like to thank Chris at no Hook, problem, Line, Steve. and Paddle here in Wilmington for turning over his shop and giving me his time to share this stuff with you guys so you can make the right decision based on how you want to go fishing. If you've got a perspective on this or any of the options we discussed, and if we left out a pro or a con, please throw them in the comments below. Thanks.